Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Soul Purpose Summit. Before I do anything else, um, I want to make sure that my voice is coming through and you're able to see the uh, image of the day one. So if you could, somebody, if you could type on the chat that you can hear me, uh, that'd be awesome. So I don't end up talking to myself for the entire time. Uh, that is a good thing to test uh, at the beginning every single time. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Awesome. And I just want to make sure that this is recorded. Okay, perfect. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever you're tuning in from. Uh, this is a Soul Purpose Summit, and I'm so excited that you are here. And I want to thank you for being here uh, because this is a topic that, uh, at least for me, uh, matters the most. And when I say that, uh, I really mean it. And, but at the same time, uh, there is a tendency that this, you know, aligning with the sole purpose to truly expressing uh, the desire is something that um, uh, we tend to uh, put on the back, back seat, right? Uh, because we, you know, when you, when you observe your life right now, uh, you have things that you are doing. Okay, I need to multitask because people are entering right now as I speak. Um, you know, we tend to get busy. We tend to get busy with our day-to-day -day activity and we forget about actually who we are. And this is exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. So um, over the years, uh, I have extensively immersed in a spiritual practice, uh, 20 plus years, and I come to the conclusion, I came to the conclusion, there's two layers in realization. Um, you can call it self-realization, a spiritual realization. And the first layer of the spiritual realization is uh, what happened uh, in my life at the age of 17, where I, uh, you know, opened the book by Neil Donald Walsh, and to really get in touch with this feeling that, oh, somebody else is actually talking about what I always felt inside. And something that I'm going to invite you to uh, do uh, today and tomorrow is to really tap into the feeling and the knowing of it because spirituality is something that we cannot see in the visible eyes but many people especially if you're here or after the pandemic especially uh, people are noticing that there's more than what's happening in the visible eyes and if we are not able to see and detect through the five senses which i'm going to be talking about more what that means it is a knowing inside that is uh, creating a certain message to remind ourselves. So it means that we already know. It means that we already know who we are and it's sort of rather strange to not to know who we are, right? So we already know who we are and, okay, somebody else is entering. And to be able to, um, connect with that is the first layer of uh, spiritual realization. And the second layer of the spiritual realization is what a lot of people are sort of confused a little bit. And when I realized the second layer of realization, uh, it made so much sense. Um, and that's the true integration. So my goal today is to sort of wake everyone up at the deeper level and to invite you to examine uh, your life and examine your life inside out. So what is happening around you and also to uh, help you shift your attention to inside. And, you know, that can be meditation, that can be visualization and all that. And it's interesting because um, one of the things that I also uh, talk about in every uh, workshop that I do is that um, I want you to sort of listen to and sort of, uh, you know, follow uh, that process today and tomorrow as if you are a, a beginner in this topic, because the moment you start seeing something that, oh, I already, already know this, uh, you start sort of closing the door. Uh, there are a lot of things that I thought that I knew 
that I realized later on, oh, this, this is the deeper understanding of it. This is the uh, next level awareness of the same item. And I think uh, we also live in this informational age, right? So uh, all the answers are one Google, one YouTube, uh, one um, book away. And that is not actually solving people's problem. So it is not the information and the knowledge that change that quality and the fulfillment of our desire, but the implementation and the embodiment of it. And when we begin implementing and embodying uh, the idea, we start raising and expanding the level of awareness. And when we expand the level of awareness, we start hearing things, the same thing, in a completely different way. Does that make sense? So the information itself uh, will help us to sort of notice things, but the expansion of awareness is what change what helps us change so uh i just wanted to talk about that a little bit as a little bit of background so and actually i have a little bit more background um so i think many people are searching more and this might be you right um uh, i think there are a lot of people there, there are people who are sort of quote unquote struggling uh there are a lot of people who are feeling good about their life but internally sensing that there's more there's more happiness deeper level of happiness uh, fulfillment joy sustaining of that joy right um freedom and sense of peace like peace is huge like a lot of people are looking for peace of mind and so how can we sustain that right and how can we embody that is what i want to talk about and i think uh, exploring the spiritual practice alone is not gonna take us there, actually. There's a little bit of layers in this. Uh, you will be exposed to this idea of in order to bring the soul in the physical world, we need to move the self closer to the soul. And then if this doesn't sound, you know, uh, if this doesn't make sense to you what it means, I will be saying that over and over throughout the two or even three days. We have a going deeper session on Saturday, actually. Um, so uh, you will get what this means by the end of this summit, which is the main message that I have. So let me say that again. So in order to bring the soul in the physical world, we need to move the self closer to the soul. Yeah. And the realization of the soul is the first layer of awakening. The second layer of awakening to me is to realize that we can move the concept of self, the image that you're holding on to, who you are in your mind, closer and closer to the divine version of you, which is the complete version, which is the awareness of who you are and the soul. Yeah. So I know Lisa is here. Um, joining us but you know Lisa when you share with me that Eckhart Tolle quote I got excited and I think the quote that he talks about which I have been sharing actually to many people uh, speaks what I the message that I have this weekend so let me read this so uh, many people this is by Eckhart Tolle right many people who are going through the early stages of the awakening process are no longer certain what their outer purpose is to me, it means that how can they express who they are in this physical world? And what drives the world no longer drives them. Seeing the madness of our civilization so clearly, they feel somewhat alienated from the culture around them. Some feel that they inhibit a no man's land between the two worlds. They are no longer run by the ego, yet the arising awareness has not yet become fully integrated into their lives inner and outer purpose have not merged so this last portion that he says that you know people are awakening up and they're realizing difference between the ego and the essence right the defense the fear versus the soul um and love however because the outside world is driven by fear the outside world is um 
con contaminated with the fear-based um, environment and energy, most people who are waking up have not yet integrated how to express their essence in this physical world. And that is what my message is. Uh, I don't think that, you know, fulfillment, empowerment, and success, and to express the limitlessness of who you truly are fully by separating the physical and material world and the spiritual practice. So the integration that needs to occur is to live and come from that essence, the spiritual fifth dimension that I'm gonna be talking about. And how can we bring that into the physical and to integrate? And in order to integrate, the key is the fourth dimension, which is the mind, which is gonna be the topic today. So um, a little bit of logistic. So we're gonna go for two hours each day, Thursday today and Friday tomorrow. And the reason that I wanted to do that, this is my first time doing this. Uh, I have done like a three days workshop, five days workshop, and it has always been 45 minutes each day. And I um, have not been good at keeping the time on track. And I always have gone to like a 53 minutes, 54 minutes. And I'm feeling like I need it a little bit more, right? Um, and also, um, speaking of the attention span, uh, I wanted to have a little bit more coming people together and a little bit longer to go deeper, uh, but we're going to have 15 minutes break, some, sometimes around 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So, um, and then the Zoom link is going to be the same. So today and tomorrow, two hours with the 15 minutes break. Uh, Saturday, I'll be doing maybe like a 60 to 75 minutes going deeper uh, session. So, uh, all the questions that you might have, uh, when you come up with something, I want you to just jot those down. And uh, if you wanna uh, use the chat box, quick questions, I'm open to sort of interact and answering the question as I explain. But the reason that that works better is to uh, have the content smooth, but at the same time, um, so at the same time to wait, maybe because I might be answering the question later and tomorrow, right? So that format has been working. So I'm gonna present the content today and tomorrow, and then you can bring the questions on Saturday. So some people are uh, talking about Eka Tolle on the chat. Uh, Jennifer is saying, can someone put the spelling of the, oh, okay, Eka Tolle. So Eka Tolle is known as somebody who wrote a book, The Power of Now and The New Earth. Okay, and people are, okay, great. Oh, what time is the session on the Saturday, Michelle? Uh, same time, eight o'clock, eight to nine Pacific Standard Time, uh, eight to nine fifteen. Um, if I need to go, so seventy-five minutes seems to be a good time actually. So uh, this is the agenda for today, day one. Part one is foundation. I'm gonna present the roadmap to wholeness, and then part two after the break, uh, I'm gonna talk about the realization, the development of the self. So uh, I'm gonna share something different. So each time you have received this, uh, the workbook, if you don't have that, just simply reach out to me. And this is what I'm going to cover. So things like 5D is the spiritual dimension, the 4D is the intellectual, the psychological dimension, and the 3D is the physical world. So we're a spiritual being living in the physical body, gifted with intellect. So the initial, initial, um, realization that we need to have is to understand that we're not the mind, we're not the body. So what that really means is that the thoughts that you think is the product of the mind. And then notice how much, how much our level of happiness or quality of our living depends on the thinking. You know, many people assume that it's based on the external influence or circumstance, but it is really the thinking because until you attach a meaning and put thought in any of the uh, external environment, you wouldn't have any qualities or experience, right? So one of the goals that I have also, I have multiple goals, is to truly help people realize that the more you think that you're living in the physical world, you're always living in your thinking and you're always living in your emotion. 
you're always living in your feeling and you're always living in your imagination that for most people is automatic and habitual. For most people is automatic and habitual. And I'm gonna talk about later on the second section of today, why those are automatic and habitual and what we need to do in order to make it intentional in creating the internal world by design instead of by default. So the key is to truly comprehend these three layers of life, spiritual, intellectual, and physical. Um, the intellectual is the mind, right? The physical is the body and the spiritual is the soul. So we are a soul and we have the mind and we have the body. So how these relate is the key, right? And then because when we understand that the livingness of the world that we are uh, living, uh, it, it is a living mechanism, right? It is not a machine. The universe is not a machine. Uh, Although it is machinery, this is by Angie. I love when she said that. Like our body too, like our body is an intelligence. It is not a machine, but it is machinery. What does that mean? It means that uh, you and I are the same. We have, I'm still letting people in. Uh, we have uniqueness in the expression and the desire, but the function of how thoughts relate to feeling, how conscious mind relates to subconscious mind, and how our energy, energetic feel in the body attract circumstance, situation around us is the same. So we're a machinery. And when we understand that we're not our thoughts because we're not the mind, and the fundamental essence every single one of us comes from the spiritual place. Oh, I thought that I just invited Andrea and she's entering there. Um, spiritual essence, we want to master that, that the mechanism of it. So what you see here, law of cause and effect, law of perpetual transmutation of energy, law of polarity, are things that we need to keep in mind in order to understand, right? So uh, I'm going to go into my favorite whiteboard in a moment, but before I go there, uh, I just want to invite everyone to sort of examining your life, and then what would you like to have, do, be, more of? What would you like to have, do, be, more of? And that is your heart desire, tapping into your heart desire, and what is what is the life that you would like to create that will give you an absolute freedom? Freedom is the ultimate um, place that we are all seeking. You know, a lot of people want more energy, more strength, uh, more love, uh, more intimate relationship, um, more fulfillment, uh, doing things that they feel called to, uh, more income, all those things is the precursor, all those things are the precursor to take us to the feeling of freedom. And it's interesting because that is what the soul already is. So let me share that whiteboard. So using the next 20 to 30 minutes, I wanna introduce you to the roadmap to wholeness. Wholeness to me is, wholeness to me is, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking because you can explain from multiple angles. Um, you know, when you uh, watch like a super soul uh, by Oprah and then, you know, she invites a lot of uh, people, uh, spiritual pioneers, right? And it's interesting because when she asks, what is the definition of the soul? Uh, every single person answers differently, right? So that is uh, very fun to watch and to see different perspective. Uh, I have my own perspective and the explanation of it, but wholeness to me is an experience, right? Experience and it's a feeling. The feeling is an ultimate things that we are looking for. We are looking for and searching and seeking feeling of freedom. And when you feel the meaning, of expression of you, 
you become freer and freer. So one of the things that I wanted to really focus on is to really remind everybody that the soul has an urge. The soul has an urge seeking fuller expression. So if you can imagine a flower, if you, when you plant the seed in a soil, it naturally grows, you know, you want to go higher, you want to go more expansive. So imagine that your the soul that is you, you know, it's kind of interesting phrase, but uh, I, I am training myself not to say your soul because you are the soul and you don't have the soul, but it's, it's the soul that is you, uh, is seeking a fuller and consistent expression. And notice that when you came on this earth, right, uh, you were chosen. You were chosen and you were called on this earth plane by something bigger than your individual self to do something, to do something that you're called to do, to do something that fulfills you, to do something to share with the world, to unite and connect. And that is what I want everyone to tap into because that's where the real juice of life is, to tap into the urge and the expression of the soul, which you only know what that is by turning your attention inward and asking, what is it that I really want to create in my life, right? And notice that the world is living completely from the other way, meaning that, you know, we just kind of realize where we're at and we're end ending up being where we're at, being in uh, the family and the community and the school and the society that we're surrounded by. And because we're so conditioned to live outside in, instead of searching within, what is the urge of the soul seeking expression, right? Like when you, when you, go, to, when you go to school and when you start you know, choosing your major and when you start looking for job or whatever the career that you wanna immerse in, nobody is trained to ask, okay, turn my attention inwards and ask my own heart's desire, what is the urge of the soul seeking expression, right? We're not trying to do that. Uh, people are seeking, you know, what do I like? What do I like? And then start seeking what's out there, right? What's out there? And then what is the thing that I can fit in? So that is a normal way to uh, look at uh, opportunities. And I'm just kind of, you know, talking about work right now, but it could be a relationship. It could be any other area, but that, the, the practice that we need to cultivate is to step inside instead of not outside. And instead of compromising the urge of the soul that is seeking fuller expression to the option that's available outside, you start from inside. And you might be wondering, well, how do I, how do I make that work if the option is limited outside so that is a perception and as you go through i think actually actually i'm going to talk about that immediately right now because one of the things that i, I want to really emphasize is the law of vibration and law of attraction conscious manifestation and that is a perpetual transmutation of energy so everything that's around us is a materialization of our insight it begins with our thinking it translate into our feeling, and then we start creating the outside. And when we understand that we're a spiritual being, there's no limited supply, but there's an infinite supply. We can call this uh, being in a competitive plane or creative plane. Uh, when you start starting, when you begin our thinking process from the outside, because the outside is rather fixated in our visual, we start assuming the limitation, you know, the pie, right? When you cut the pie, there's a certain amount. But when we come from a spiritual idea and when we understand that the outside is a manifestation of our inside, and when we start believing that there's an infinite supply, there's an endless possibility. So notice that many of us, because of the way that we're trained to think, 
outside in, we're putting ourselves in a cage of limitation uh, through our thinking process and um, the way that we believe things. So uh, that's a little bit of a background of how I want to present. Okay, I'm just going to move in stuff. Okay, so um, if you have been in my past workshop, you have uh, seen this, but let me explain this again. So there are three planes of understanding. The fifth dimension is your spiritual plane. Your fourth dimension is your intellectual or psychological plane. And the third dimension is your physical world. Now, people often ask me, what's the first and the second? Uh, the third dimension is just, you know, the, the length and the height and the width. So it's a 3D world, which is the world of the space, the physical world. The fourth dimension is, so this is your uh, physical world, the P, right? And then the fourth dimension is the uh, intellectual world. And this is um, also where the, the mind resides, right? And this is the uh, spiritual plane. And this is where the soul lives. This is the mind, sorry. And this is actually the body. Body is in the third dimension. Yeah. So notice that the third dimension is a space. The fourth dimension, there's no space. It is the thinking and the imagination. It's a psychology. It doesn't occupy space. The fifth dimension is the fifth dimension, the quantum field, soul. There's no space either. Yeah. And then you have the mind and then you have the body. I know I said that the body resides in a three dimension. This is just for the sake of explanation, right? Uh, the mind thinks, the body feels. Uh, the conscious mind, and this is your subconscious mind. The body is your subconscious mind. And the body has the heart. Heart is the seed of feeling. And when you begin asking yourself, what is it that I truly want in this life? What, I, what do I want to create? What would make me absolutely free to be who I am and to feel like I am expressing the limitlessness of who I am in this physical world? That is not an intellectual exercise. You ask that and you drop in your heart into your heart and you close your eyes and then you stop your thinking process and allow the heart to answer the question. This is, these are things that we're not used to do like because we, we want to sort of uh, find out the answer, answer using the mind. So the first step to really begin connecting with the soul's purpose, soul's expression is to tap into the heart's desire because the heart to me is a gate entrance that the soul can shine through. So one of the things that I often explain is that there's a fifth dimension soul, and then this energy of the soul shows up in this physical world, which we call manifest, manifest. You know, manifest means that you bring your idea into physical form. But let me go a little bit deeper. In the fifth dimension of 5D, in the spiritual plane, nothing is lacking. Nothing is lacking. So I said earlier that uh, the ultimate goal or what people are seeking today is a feeling of freedom. A lot of things that people are uh, wanting in you know, the family, in their health, in their work. Ultimately, people are seeking a feeling of freedom. I don't know if people are aware of that, but the, the inside is seeking that subconsciously. And the true essence of who we are, which is we are a soul. The quality of the soul is happiness. The quality of the soul is joy. I don't know if I can write all these. <laughs> it's joy. The quality of the soul 
is freedom. The quality of the soul is peace. So the soul, like you, you, can, you can think of a baby, an infant, right? Uh, infant is happiness, infant is joy, infant is free, and infant is playful and curious, right? So all those qualities, peace, that we're seeking through our life experience is who we already are, essentially. Does that make sense? So I think it's a, it's a good analogy to talk about the infant because when we look at infant, right, they, they are pure and perfect and complete. So that energy that you can feel from the infant and baby is present within you all the time. So that is the quality of the soul. So what I also mean by this is that, you know, things like abundance, things like limitlessness, things like prosperity, things like um, empowerment, those qualities and energies are already in the fifth dimension. So one of the things that uh, I love what Neville talks about is that uh, nothing is created nor destroyed. Everything is already created in the spiritual plane. So I asked earlier that, okay, what is, what, what is it that you would like more of in life? that you are not seeing yet in the physical world, right? So it's not like when you, when you start focusing on the, the, the visible eyes, you start you know, going after your goal and do the mechanical stuff to move closer to the goal. But when we really understand the whole process and dynamic from a spiritual plane, that version of you, which we call frequency, frequency is a level of vibration right? Like a radio station. That version of you with the desire fulfilled already exists in the spiritual plane because nothing is lacking. Now, when I say that, I think this group, because you are attracted to the summit soul purpose, you have a sort of intuitive sense that, okay, that sort of sounds like it makes sense. But when you start thinking logically, probably you get lost. Like, how does that work? What do you mean by everything is already created? Uh, that version of you already exists, right? So that is more of the spiritual way of looking at the world. And it transcends your thinking and it transcends your logical mind. But I want you to follow your intuition and internal knowing because I believe that everyone can understand this because this is who you already are, right? We, we are a perfection and the completion of the uh, soul energy. So the, the version of you that wants more that to fulfill your soul, the urge of the soul, already exists in the spiritual plane, right? So manifestation is not about creating because it's already created, but moving the energy of the soul using your psychological mind and to tap into the feeling. So through thinking, through feeling, moving that into a three-dimensional world, that is a conscious manifestation. Now, the manifestation process is always working, just like gravity exists. So when you let go of something, it always goes down, right? So it is about consciously understanding this process and tapping into your thinking and imagination using the magnificent tool called the mind and learning the process of how to move the energy of the soul into the physical world is the work of manifestation. So, um, I'm just going to sort of share a little bit what I'm going to share tomorrow, because tomorrow I have the integration of the self and the soul. So I said earlier that the whole theme of this Soul Purpose Summit is to bring soul more into the physical. We need to move the self closer to the soul. Yeah, let me say that again, because this may puzzle a little bit. To the, the, whole, the wholeness, right? The, the wholeness and the freedom that we're seeking can only be achieved when we are living simultaneously integrating the three planes of understanding, meaning to live from the spiritual essence, utilizing the mind, the way that we're designed to use, which I'm going to explain what that is, and to use the physical world as a playground 
of soul's expression. Like imagine that the earth is a huge canvas and you wanna add it and you are here to express and play and craft your arts in this earth canvas. That's what we're here to do, right? So that needs to start from the inside. So let me explain what it means by soul expressing in the physical requires cells moving closer to uh, the soul. And I think it's good to, for me to explain this a little bit and then come back later tomorrow to go deeper into it, right? Um, so the mind is a tool. You are not the mind. The mind is a tool. You have the mind. The body is an instrument that we're living. You are not the body. So we are the soul and we arrive on this earth plane as artists. You might be a scientist, but any scientist or artist to, to craft your art and to express it and to serve the world, to touch people. You know, there are two purposes in life. One is to cultivate your gift within, which is the cultivation and the nourishment and the nurturing of your soul's expression, whatever that is. And the second layer of purpose is to utilize that to touch others so you can be the catalyst to wake people up, to um, turn the lights on within them. And then when you start turning the lights in every single one of us around us, the world starts illuminating, and then you start creating the oneness of the light. So that is the movement of the wholeness and the oneness from the spiritual plane moving into the physical world. Don't worry, I'm gonna be explaining more of that tomorrow. I just wanna sort of give a little bit of sneak peek because when you hear multiple times, you start clicking in. So the understanding and the realization that the mind is not you is huge because only then you can connect with who you truly are. And when you understand that the mind is not you, what does that really mean? It means that how you see you internally is not determined and it's dynamic and you can change it. How you see you internally, that sense of self that you have, like, you know, we have an identity. Let's, let's make it a little bit simple. Each one of us has identity, right? Identity could be a role that you're playing in your family, the role that you're playing at work, um, or the feeling that you have about you that you are this or you are not this, right? Like uh, any opinions or thinking pattern that you have, like I feel something or I am not feeling good enough or I am not feeling confident, I am not lovable. All those inner dialogues are part of your identity because who you think you are is a part of your thoughts. So every single thoughts that we think creates an idea and come together to form a concept of self in your mind. Does that make sense? And when we understand that the mind is a tool and it's not you, you can change it. And that's what needs to happen, right? So, so let, let, for instance, let me, let, let's, let, let's make it simple. You have an idea of who you are and who you're not. We call that self-image, the concept of self, right? Um, let's say you have somebody who you admire. Oh, somebody's entering right now. Uh, let's say somebody, there's somebody who you admire, right? And when you look at yourself and that person who you admire side by side, there is a view and there's a feeling inside of you that I am not this person, right? That is the concept of yourself. I like when Sandy said, uh, self-image is who you think you're not. Who you think you're not. Um, you, you think you're not this person. You think you're not this person. And in that idea and judgment and opinion about how you're seeing you is the concept of self. And the concept of self is in the mind 
in how you feel about you based on how you see you in your mind is your self-esteem, feeling, sense of worthiness. So the mind that sees you in a certain way in the subconscious mind that is nested in the body, the feeling that you have about you are constantly communicating to build a sense of who you are. And when you are in a certain feeling about something long enough, that becomes a certain belief about you, which is the precursor of how you see the world. The world is only a representation of how you see you and what you believe about you. So in order to bring more of the soul and the fullness of who we are in the physical world, we need to begin observing this fourth dimension, which is actually the true key for the second layer of realization, uh, spiritual awakening. The first layer of spiritual awakening is to understand that we're not the mind, we're not the body. We are the soul that comes from and still lives in the fifth dimension. And the essence of who we are is already complete. We are happiness, we are joy, we are freedom, we are peace. Nothing, nothing is lacking. And then the energy of soul is limitless. It comes from an infinite supply. It's not in the visible world. And then the soul that is us got thrown in this, in this physical world that is being experienced through our five senses. Oh, I didn't write five senses. So the language of the physical three-dimensional world is five senses. See, here, smell, taste, touch. The language of the fourth dimension is your thinking and the feeling. Well, let me say just it's just the thinking because I believe that the feeling bridges all the three dimensions. That's why the heart is the key for everything. And the language of the fifth dimension is the knowing and the being. You know because you know, not because you believe in anything, but you have a gut knowing that you are more than the mind. It's not something that was proven by the, whatever the neuroscientist you know, field is, but you have a gut knowing that what I'm talking about here or the spiritual plane exists and feel home because that is who you are. And it is the knowing, right? It is not the thinking, but it's the knowing or it's the being. Those are the language of the fifth dimension. So the first layer of realization to bring wholeness in this physical world, in our life, is to understand that we are not the mind, we're the, not the body, and we are coming from this place, the fifth dimension, right? Which is a lot of the spiritual practices uh, encourage us to tap into. However, if you only obtain the first realization, I found that we continue to suffer. We continue to struggle because the second layer of the spiritual awakening, the self-realization is that the mind and the self is not something that we need to get rid of. I'm saying that because there is a tendency, I have observed a tendency that different spiritual communities are so uh, passionate about transcending the self and being in this um, you know, fifth dimension. Um, but I don't think that is the goal. Living from that place is the goal, but in order to function in the physical world and create the expression of the urge of the soul, feeling free, feeling the success, feeling the fulfillment, we need to begin understanding this concept of self, which is the four-dimensional thing of self, self, self. 
to understand the mind and understand thinking and understand feeling. The mind is a gatekeeper and the heart is the gate. The mind can go to either thinking or seeing yourself as an empower or a positive version of you. Or the mind can go and choose to think disempower or negative thoughts. When the mind think or entertain disempowering thoughts, the gatekeeper closes the heart. And the more you're entertaining disempowering thoughts, being in a state of fear and feeling less than something or feeling inferior or any um, destructive emotions, the mind closes the heart, the gate to protect and you disconnect from the essence of who you are. When we train our mind to cultivate and nurture the self to meet the urge of the soul, this, this, this is a little bit um, intertwined, so stay with me. The heart is a gate that the soul can shine through. Each and every one of us has the urge of the soul seeking expression in the physical world. That soul's expression can be delivered through the opening of the heart. So when we ask our heart, what is it that I truly want? You're allowing the heart to open, to tap into the urge of the soul. Yeah. And then using that expression of the soul and what the heart feels, we want to begin cultivating and creating a concept of self, how you want to see yourself. So let me, let me, let me, let me take a little bit more deeper. You know, we have a heart desire, right? And the heart desire will be how you want to be living. And what is the experience that you want to create in the physical world? What is the what is the um, what is the art that you want to demonstrate in this playground in the Earth campus? Sorry, canvas, not campus, canvas. And in order to create the outside, we want to create the inside because the outside world is a reflection of how we see ourselves in the mind which is the concept of self. So does that make sense? We ask our heart, what is it that we want in this lifetime? And then based on that information and the feeling and the wisdom, whatever you wanna call it, you wanna decide who you wanna become in your mind. Because the sense of self that we have only resides in your mind. Let me say that in a different way. You might be, you know, watching yourself through the mirror when you brush your teeth in the morning. Uh, you might have some, you know, visual of who you think you are, but that's just an appearance. But the concept of you only resides in your mind because concept is an idea. An idea is a collection of thoughts. So who you think you are is in your mind. And it's dynamic, so you can decide who you want to become based on your fulfillment of the heart desire, which is essentially the expression of your soul, and then begin practicing forming the new version of the self in your mind. And if you're following the formation of the self in your mind to meet your heart desire, that is the activity of the self moving closer and closer to the soul. Are we following this? So the theme of this Soul Purpose Summit is in order for the soul to be expressed in the physical world, we need to move the self, the concept of self, closer and closer to the energy of the soul. And when that happens, the integration of three planes is accomplished and you're living 
based on the concept of wholeness, meaning a deep fulfillment and success, whatever that is that you are uh, wanting and seeking. So the self is dynamic and you can be whoever you want to be. And after the break, which we're gonna have in five minutes, you know, two, three minutes, I'm gonna talk about the development of the self and why it's so difficult for so many people to change and how to change it. So I have been, let me come back to the sort of beginning. I have been immersed in this sort of uh, work and ideas for the last 20 years. And I feel that I have the answer for a lot of people's challenge because what we're kind of being exposed to right now is the foundation of life, right? Um, we're energetic beings and we live in this energetic world. So in the energy can be altered through all of this. A lot of the challenges and issues that people have externally health-wise, whatever, I see that as a lack in misalignment with the energy of the soul. And life is informing us to pay attention to go back home. It's necessary for us to uh, be who we already are, essentially are, to be able to create harmony in our life. It just doesn't make sense to have everything smooth and at ease and flow in our life if we are disconnected from who we are and what we are actually here to do. Does that make sense? So the way that I see, you know, even in health and wellness, even in relationship, even in working environment, this is the foundation, the base to connect. And when we start coming from this place, a lot of things that we are thinking that we need to change are just a mechanical thing. But when we spiritually and intuitively align with the energy of how we are um, expected by the bigger version of us to be in harmony with, all the challenges will fade and drop away. So this is also what we mean by we need to focus on within. And we need to focus on the foundation instead of the symptom. Because a lot of the things that we are dealing with, if you are dealing with anything, it's just a symptom, life informing us to go back to the cause. The cause is always this disconnection and lack of integration of these three planes. So, okay, I am on time, which is exciting. So this is the roadmap to wholeness. And if you have any questions, uh, and if you, it's a quick question, you can type on the chat. Otherwise, uh, you can sort of jot down to bring that on Saturday because Saturday is going to go uh, Q&A and going deeper session. Uh, I think that is it. So uh, it's 8.55 uh, California time. Uh, let's take 15 minutes break and come back to 10 minutes after nine o'clock. And you know, if you have a different time zone, that's uh, your 15 minutes later. And we're going to be talking about the development of the self. Development of the self is so important to understand, to begin um, tapping into. Oh, hi, Ken. Hey, Marl. Okay, we'll come back to 15 in 15 minutes. See you then.